this really may be the race for control of the United States Senate. So it's not just about Senator Brown's vote. This is about the votes of all of the Republicans. Jim Inhofe, the senator, would become the person who would have supervision over the Environmental Protection Agency. He says global warming is a hoax. And that's what would happen. This matters in this race control of the Senate. You're not running against Jim, Jim Inhofe. You're running against me, Professor. That was Republican Senator Scott Brown and his Democratic challenger Elizabeth Warren from the Massachusetts Senate debate last night. Now, while most watchers seem to view their debate as a draw here, we wanted to focus on the point that Warren was making there. And frankly, uh, until Andrew brought it up this morning, I really never thought about it, which is you look at all the individual Senate races, but when you put a composite, you say, well, what if power did change hands? Who would be in charge? Who would be running which committees? And what kind of things do these guys think? And what would they like to do? Well, when they do make those decisions in November, it'll go from beyond theory to actuality if the Republicans get the majority there. And for more on that, I want to bring Andrew back in. And you started doing a little bit of what, what if here on what could happen 45 days from now. What if Republicans win control of the Senate? Who winds up taking control of these Senate committees, as Elizabeth Warren was talking about? And let's start with the man Ms. Warren was talking about last night. His name is James Inhofe, senator from Oklahoma, and he could indeed take over the Committee on the Environment and Public Works if the GOP wins back the Senate. Inhofe is not only a climate change denier, he also wants to abolish the EPA, the agency his committee would oversee. How anti-climate change is Inhofe? The title of his book released this year is The Greatest Hoax, How the Global Warming Conspiracy Threatens Your Future. And he believes that so much that during the 2010 blizzard, his family built an igloo near the Capitol to, in his words, show Al Gore that global warming does not exist. He later presented that photo during a Senate speech, making it part of the congressional record. Inhofe may not be the only candidate to take over that committee if the GOP wins back the Senate. The other possible chairman is Louisiana's David Vitter, best known perhaps for his patronage of a D.C. prostitution ring. Vitter has called climate change, quote, ridiculous pseudoscience garbage. He also wants to abolish the EPA, and he's called for a 50-year strategy for increasing the use of nuclear power, even as most countries are reducing their dependency on nuclear. Other committees focus on other issues and oversee other government operations, including questions of war and peace and foreign policy. And if Republicans win back the Senate, the likely chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee would be Tennessee Senator Bob Corker. Corker opposed the ending of the Iraq War and opposes the end of the war in Afghanistan, saying he thinks the U.S. will need a presence there for another additional decade. He's also fond of reminding voters that the U.S. requires a world-class military, but he opposed a recent bill to help returning veterans find jobs back at home. Of course, this election season, the most talked about issues relate to jobs in the economy, and there's one Senate committee that has vast authority on the rules governing Wall Street and the financial sector, including mortgages and mortgage-backed securities, the devices many say led to the collapse of the housing bubble in 2008. The Republican who would likely lead that committee, the Senate Banking Committee, is Idaho Senator Mike Crapo. Crapo opposes Wall Street regulation, first voting against the Dodd-Frank bill, then continuously voting to weaken it. When Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, testified before the committee, Corker asked him how he thinks Washington should regulate the banks. Critics called that the fox guarding the hen house. And Crapo has opposed the Consumer Protection Bureau and refused to vote for anyone to run that bureau before President Obama simply appointed someone. One of the widest ranging committees is known as the HELP Committee. It covers health, including health care and health care reform, education from Head Start all the way to colleges, and labor, all issues that have made major headlines in recent years. And the Republican chairman in waiting of the Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee appears to be Tennessee's Lamar Alexander. Alexander opposes health care reform and has called Medicaid a medical ghetto despite its popularity. He's called teachers unions the biggest obstacle to improving schools and opposed student loan reforms making loans more affordable and easier to repay. Plus he's taken numerous anti-labor union positions and cast scores of anti-union votes as well. Government programs need government funding so when it comes to budgeting and funding things like Social Security that's the job of the Appropriations Committee. The Republican chairman in waiting seems to be Alabama's Richard Shelby. Shelby supports the Ryan plan, which calls for cuts in most government spending, including safety net programs. He's also called for a raise in the Social Security retirement age to age 70 or 72. He opposes the Consumer Protection Bureau and other business regulations, 
and the Appropriations Committee approves the funding for government regulators. And for other money-related issues, there's the Government Commerce Committee, and in a Republican Senate, its chairman could be South Carolina's Jim DeMint. DeMint is best known as a Tea Party favorite who's told reporters he opposes compromise when the parties take different views. He wants to slash the size of the government and axe thousands of federal employees. On energy, his take is drill everywhere, regardless of environmental or other concerns. DeMint has called Social Security socialistic and a failed policy, and he thinks Medicare is unconstitutional. And DeMint opposes most regulations as being anti-business. So how likely is it that all these changes will happen? Republicans only need to pick up four seats to regain control or just three seats if Mitt Romney wins the White House. Rich? All right. You think the public cares? I don't think the public thinks about it all that much. It's You think about voting for your senator, you don't think about the larger picture, which is one of the reasons why I was... Why watching the debate last night sort of prompted me to, to get into this. Well, she makes the argument, but do you think when people go into the ballot box, we, we always have this debate if there's a conscious thing, well, I want to split the, the levers of power that the executive branch and legislative are different. I never bought that, but the numbers show I'm wrong, that there is, whether it's coincidence or not, it seems to happen more than it doesn't. Do you think they also think, or do you think if they were told, listen, if you're doing a vote for this, the balance of power at CHIP would make it look like this. Do you think if they were told that they'd care? It depends on the issue. I, I think it's definitely true for things like abortion. And it may be true for issues like marriage equality. But in reality, most voters go to the poll and choose their president different, go to the polling site, choose their president different from a legislator at any level of government. Your president is symbolic. Your legislator is the person that brings home resources. And as long as that person is doing that very specific aspect of their job. You ate all the bums but your own. Right, exactly. Uh, now, this other what if, I want to give credit is where credit's due. This is a piece uh, we saw that, again, uh, got you doing the what if parlor game. Obviously, we remember in 2000 uh, how close that election was, and we all learned about hanging chads in Florida, and we also know after the recounts and then the Supreme Court decision, well, it could have gone the other way very easily. Al Gore won the popular vote, but as we know, George Bush won the electoral vote thanks to our highest court. But what if history got twisted on its ear and it went the other way? Well, it turns out we're not the only ones asking that question right now. So to find out what would have happened, at least to one way of thinking, Andrew, uh, Jeff Greenfield, I believe, uh, asked this very question and he, he kind of laid out an alternative universe. And Rich, all sorts of things would have could have been different or maybe not. That's the beauty of these kinds of mind games. But they're the ones being played out by political reporter Jeff Greenfield in his new book, 43 Asterisk, where Gore beat Bush, a political fable. In that book, Greenfield says, if 9-11, he wonders if it might have happened differently or perhaps not at all, saying, Quote, Al Gore would have been much more on the case than Bush because Gore had been on the National Security Council the previous eight years as vice president, tracking al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden, and nowhere near Bush had been as involved since 93 in the end of the first Bush administration. Greenfield also speculates the nation would have been less unified after 9-11 than it was, noting the politics would have been tougher on Gore than they were on Bush, in no small part because would-be Vice President Joe Lieberman was such a staunch supporter of the Iraq War, whereas Gore opposed it. Finally, the impact on the 08 race. Greenfield wonders if the GOP shift to the right might have started sooner because Bush would have lost in 2000, giving the GOP three straight election losses. And he suggests the mood of the nation in 08 might have been vastly different and less angry than it was, a change that would seem to be a worse fit for Barack Obama and perhaps a better one for Hillary Clinton, who Greenfield suggests may well have been the Democratic nominee in 08, if not the president, come 2009, Rich. You know, um we all remember that uh, famous uh, August memo uh, that uh, went before uh, Bush, then on the ranch, and says Bin Laden determined to act uh, to attack U.S. And he said to the guy, "Fine, you've covered your backside. I'm cleaning it up." When he gave him the report, I do think it's a little bit optimistic to say that somebody else getting that report would have done such actionable differences. 9/11 would have been prevented. We'll never know, obviously. I do think Bush on the rubble with the bullhorn. I don't think. Al Gore was capable of that, and I think as much as I disagreed with the decisions that were made thereafter, obviously Iraq being the biggest one with those WMDs, I do think that America needed a rallying cry, and I think we would have gotten behind anybody. I don't know if they would have gotten behind Al Gore as much, because he just had sound of the same problem that Romney has right now, that lack of connectivity. For all of Bush's faults, we were looking for somebody um, that 
felt it and everything else. Maybe Gore would have had it. I mean, you were around those guys. Yeah, I, you know, I think that I think part of what you're saying about Gore too is that generally speaking, most voters believe that Republicans are stronger in on in in, in public safety issues in the military. Um, it, what's interesting is that at a Democratic convention, you heard a Democrat yeah. talking more about military and veterans yeah. than than Republicans. But I would say that if Gore were president, I think you would he would have been a one-term president, actually. And I think that the the we would not have the hyper partisanship that we do now. I think the Republicans would have been a bit more moderated um, you, after you watch after, what you after say Gore. After a national attack, Don, what do you think? I think that it's ridiculous, frankly, <laughs> <laughs> for Jeff Greenfield to to predict that somehow 9-11 might not have happened if Al Gore had won. I just don't get it. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, I, I just don't get the math. I understand what you, what you said about a, a memo and so on, and that Bush may have been a, a bit uh, aloof to the situation, but to me that's ridiculous. Two, I think the country perhaps might be better off financially if Gore would have had the opportunity to continue the, uh, the practices mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that you are right about this one part, that Gore, you know, the country was after 9-11 was looking to rally around someone. And so I, Gore was changing because I remember talking to him and interviewing him several times. He was Mr. Stiff, sort of like somebody we know now, the Republican candidate. But remember the makeover that he went through? Right, right. And so he was doing his hair differently and so on. He so looked like Grizzly Adams at a certain point. You know, Andrew, I just, could you imagine what the GOP response would have been if the Supreme Court basically ruled with Al Gore? Okay, and they let the recounts go. They would have forget about it. Imagine Obama, but they would call him illegitimate president. Do you imagine right wing radio after if they did the recount and then all of a sudden that Al Gore was president? Yeah, that's pretty I, much the reaction the far left had. For I, most I think it would have been no, but I think it would have been even more <laughs> harsh. I, I don't know. On the Roth Nader had won. Why are you going there? Because well, he was well, running. He was on the ballot in two thousand. Yeah. Okay. As long as we're playing what if. He, if you're playing what if, he shouldn't have been a spoiler. That's if we're going to play well, what if. All right, now we're going off the rails. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break here. When Ross we Perot. come back, what we're going to have our latest installment for... Uh-oh, Pedro. Andrew's favorite lawmaker here and swindling state lawmaker at that. We'll explain why this guy is back in the news. Pound for pound, maybe the lowest of the low when it comes to lawmakers. And you will not believe what this guy had the... Let me see if I do it right now, Andrew. Chutzpah. Uh, to try. We'll be right back. Stay with us.